Jill. Frank, what, what's the matter? Nothing. No, no, there's nothing to worry about. In fact, everything is wonderful. I just had to come by and tell you... Oh, I woke you up. No, Well, it's I'm okay. Just... It's okay. It's worth it. Believe me. <laughs> I have just had one of the most sensational evenings in my entire life, and I want to tell you and Edmund all about it. Oh, well, he's asleep. He's asleep. Oh, of course he's asleep. Where else would he be? The kid does everything he's supposed to do. He's supposed to be asleep now, and where is he? He's asleep, right? Uh-huh. Are you, uh... <laughs> drunk? No, I'm not drunk. Not at all. Look, let me wake him up, and I'll go... No! Uh, I mean, no, no. I just got him settled after a crazily restless evening. I know he would love to hear all your news, but I would prefer that he slept. He'll hear your news another time. Oh, well, then I didn't wake you. No, no, I was just turning the light oh, off. Oh, then I don't feel so bad. Well, you know, I was looking forward to a serious political discussion with my son, but uh, I guess that'll have to wait. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Uh, why don't you uh, come in and tell me what, the, what this crazy state of yours is? Ahem. <clears throat> Bulletin? Yes? Mr. Frank Ryan has just been promised the endorsements and support of nine. Nine of the city's most important people, most powerful people, including Mr. Bert Morris. Upon leaving the dinner party given by Mrs. Ray Woodard, Mr. Morris was heard telling Dave Feldman, Riverside District Leader, that if Mr. Ryan wanted to run for the Senate in November, then Ryan surely would go to the, to the Senate in November. And then, Mr. Frank Ryan, formally, finally officially announced his candidacy to the United States Senate, and everyone had a good time. The entire evening was a resounding success. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted, really. Oh, I was hoping you would be. Uh, can I just ask you one question? Sure, fire away. Fire away, I'll answer anything. Do you have any idea what time it is? Oh, Jill, I'm sorry. I, no wonder you didn't want... It's mm. after one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jill. It's just... It's just that... It's all right. Coming here was the most natural thing in the world for me to do. Straight after that party. Because I wanted to share it with you. I don't think I could do that tonight. I think we're on the mailing list of every company in this country. Oh, darling, don't do that now. Well, if I don't do it now, I'll have twice as much mail to go through in the morning. <laughs> Besides which, <laughs> I can't sleep. <sighs> this was some evening, huh? Oh, uh, it was. Success, wealth, power. Those are things Ray Woodard said Frank had in store with him. If he went out and got him, she was sure of that. Mm. That lady seemed very sure of a lot of things. Oh, what's the matter? Uh, I don't know. Can't put my finger on it, John. It's just... Well... <clears throat> I just feel uneasy about something. With Ray Woodard? You? Yes. Didn't you notice? All night long, she was telling everyone how wonderful everyone else was. I mean, she started with the big wigs, then it was you and Bob and Francis, me. Now, I know we're wonderful, darling, but not four hours' worth. You don't think she meant any of it? No, I think she meant it. I just think she meant for it to have an effect. I've got to admit, that lady, in an awful hurry, got people thinking her way. Well, we all know that Frank has a great future in store for him. She didn't have to convince anybody of that. True. Or maybe it's just that I saw Ray Woodard on the home ground for the first time. Ah, uh, it's a very different world. Well, Frank has to get used to moving in that world if he wants to get ahead. I know, I know. Francis Xavier Michael Ryan is on the way up. Mm. He's straight up. Yes, but what about Jill and the baby, hmm? Well, he said he was going to try and work something out. Yes, but does Ray Woodard want him to work something out? What does Ray Woodard want? I mean, it, it, does she put all this time and energy and money into Francis and then just let him go off on his own? If she's doing that, darling, she's a very generous woman, very. 
Or does she want to be the power behind the throne? Or does she want something more? I don't know, darling. I, I was asking those questions two weeks ago. I mm. don't know if I have any answers. Nor do I. <laughs> Thirty percent. National hog balancer. Now, who in their right mind would think we needed a hog? <laughs> Darling, Siobhan, Siobhan. Oh, I can tell by your handwriting. I almost threw the envelope out. Oh, oh if you can <laughs> call that handwriting. Look at that girl. She grabs the first envelope that comes into her hands. Well, let's just be grateful she writes to us at all. She's not the world's most faithful correspondent. Yes, true. Dear Dad, Mom, it's your faithful correspondent. <laughs> Sorry about the stationery, but I'm hiding out in this young man's office in order to avoid the Seattle news media. Dear heaven. But not to worry. I have everything under control. I and several other teachers were suspended. I won't go into detail now except to say that it is the battle of academic freedom against the fascistic policies of library <laughs> censorship. Anyway, I organized the teacher's protest and, of course, the tyrants suspended us. We have a lawyer, but even if we are reinstated, I am sure I will not go back to that place. Underlined. Yes, I see it, I see it. At the moment, I'm torn. I, I'd love to come home and see you all. Oh. I'd like to get a look at Mary's husband. Does he really keep her chain to the stove? Oh, John. <laughs> but I might very well go to... Australia instead. What? I've been invited. No. Who'd invite to Australia? How how many children has Kathleen had since Christmas? <laughs> Love your mom. A thousand kisses down. Don't know what I'll do after the rally tonight. Your baby daughter, Siobhan. She must mean there's some kind of a protest rally or something. I haven't the slightest notion what that child means. I don't even know how you can Read that letter with that kind of penmanship. <laughs> oh, dear God. I'm going to bed. In Australia. Darling, she is not going to any Australia. She's just... She's just talking. You know, Siobhan, she likes to hear the sound of her own voice. Yes. Sweetheart. What? Siobhan's coming home. <laughs> Won't that be grand? Oh, it would. Oh, I'd love to have her home, John. I think things would be better between her and Mary now. I mean, with Mary actually out of the house. They've settled down. They've mellowed. <laughs> Siobhan and Mary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love them for the marvelous girls they are, but mellow is one thing they'll never be. One of a kind. Yes. That's what our kids are, one of a kind. Mm -hmm. Just like their mother. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know how we ever kept any peace in this house with the competition and the rivalries. Because we loved them. Mm. Because we loved each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are such a beauty, lady. Oh, I am, John. It's for love of you. Oh, love of <laughs> Who is that? Come in, darling. Oh, uh, I know it's late, but Patty's on duty and I was alone and miserable. What is it, Dave? Well, I heard you come in and I wanted to know if, if I could visit for a minute. Just for a minute, dear. It's, it is late. Come. Nice to see you're able to get around a little better by yourself now, Dee. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I can, uh, I can get around, uh, yes, quite well yeah, by myself. You know, I feel like this is my home now. Ah, there, sit you down. Oh, speaking of homes, guess who we just got a letter from? A letter from Siobhan. She's thinking of coming home. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Does Mary know that yet? Come on, Mayor. We can't just lie here. Now, what are you going to do?
I do not intend to do anything. I'm going to let Ryan go to sleep. Sleep? Sleep? You call that sleep? Sleep? Kid's in agony. She is not in agony. She's uncomfortable. She should be picked up and held. Jack, she's exhausted. We have held her and talked to her all night. You're picking her up every time she opened her mouth for the last hours, got her overstimulated. Well, she's finally settling down. Now, just leave her alone, please. Settling down, huh? Jack, she is teething. It is not fatal. She has the whiskey on her gums, and that should help. If she can suffer through it, so can you. The kid's gonna get cirrhosis of the liver with all the whiskey you're rubbing her gums. Uh, drop her to the old iris. Just makes everything nice and numb. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a quote from Johnny Ryan's baby book. My father got five kids through teething with a little Irish whiskey and a lot more patience than you have. Yeah, Irish. yeah, please. No, 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 Johnny Ryan. Okay, I'm sure I can never measure up to that paragon of fatherhood, but I'm in no mood for comparisons tonight, huh? Jack, this is obviously worse for you than it is for her, so why don't you just do yourself a favor and call fate, huh? It's not too late. Well, we aren't going to get any sleep at this rate, so you might as well. No, I, 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 uh, I don't want to wake her. She's a baby doctor. She's supposed to wake up in the middle of the night at least once a night. It's a recording. Hey, hey, you got a pencil? Huh? 555 2146. 555 This pencil doesn't have a point on it. Ah, I'm a writer. I don't even have a pencil in a place. So, uh, five, 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 one, two, four, six. Two, one, four, six. Huh? Oh, it's Tom's number. Uh, well, he's out of the hospital, and Faith is staying with him while he's recuperating. Oh, yeah? What's going on? Something serious? Well, uh, I don't really know, but, um... Faith doesn't know what's going to come of it, but uh, I think it might lead to something permanent. You're kidding. Well, you know Faith. Super careful. And then she's still trying to shake those last feelings about Pat, but, uh, oh, I think once she and Tom have some real time together, you know, without secrets and without Liam, love. Well, that'd be nice. Mm. <laughs> Listen. I am listening. Not to me. Oh. Mm. She's asleep. Because she knew her dad was worried about her. I'll, uh, I'll just go and take a peek. It's mine, too. Uh, I you guess, know, uh... You don't have to do it alone. I guess I forgot. <laughs> Let me help raise the kid, huh? I want to. I want you to. But, uh, right now, I'd like to forget about her for a while. Would you help me do that, Vanelli? With pleasure, Vanelli. Dear, I can you eat? Am I flattering myself in thinking that this is as important to you as it is to me? Of course not. I'm thrilled that you came by to tell me. Even though I rousted you out of bed? In view of the hour, I wouldn't blame you if you were mad as hell. 
I am not mad, really. In fact, it uh, sort of reminds me of old times. How? Oh, being here together, stealing time. Oh. No, it's true. We never had any time on our own. Oh, maybe an hour or a day. Nothing that we called our own. It was always the campaign and Delia and the city council, and it seemed like the time always went to something else. And yet we fell in love. Yeah, and then we fell out of love again. But was that because we didn't have the time? Or was that because of other factors? I don't know. I've made it very clear that I want to see you and Edmund as much as possible. You've made it clear? Oh, to Ray Woodard? And to myself. Oh, well, that's terrific. You see, that's just the problem. I mean, I don't particularly like the idea of you and Ray Woodard uh, working out some schedule to include me and my son. Oh, no, no. I didn't mean to make it sound like you and Edmund were items on an agenda, no. Okay. I wish I could make you understand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe it's just the hour. Can I trust you? I want desperately to trust you. I don't trust Ray Woodard. Ah, don't apologize. I understand. Look, tomorrow, little John and I are marching in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Oh. If I could get through somehow and make you understand how much I want to try and how much I want you and Edmund a part of it all. And then there's going to be the usual party at Ryan's. Mm -hmm. Well, could you come? I'll try. I'm sorry I'm asking so much. But this time, for Edmund's sake, as well as my own, I need to be sure. I need to know I can count on you. Could uh, you bring Edmund? I think he'll enjoy it. I think he'll enjoy it. He'll love it. I'll see what I can do. So careful and so cautious. But I want you so much. Uh, well... How about if I call you in the morning? Okay. What I really want to do is put my arms around you and make love till there are no more reservations, no more doubts, just us. Well, I guess I better be thinking about getting home. Say no, Jill. Tell me to put my arms around you and hold you and not go away. I think that sounds like a good idea. Except I don't want you to leave. And I'm glad. I'm glad you came by to tell me everything. Thanks. Uh, hmm? Maybe tomorrow? Uh, maybe tomorrow. Good night. Vaughn comes home? Oh, of course she'd be happy, darling. What a question. Mm, yeah, well, I suppose. Well, anyway, I'm going to be very glad to see Siobhan. Well, I hope you really can see her. Is there any sign of her vision coming back at all? Maeve, I don't know. Sometimes I think so, but, you know, then I realize it's just a dream. See, in my dreams, I see all these wonderful things. I see myself on the beach with Patty, and everything is wonderful, and we look so happy, and he's building sandcastles, you know, just the way he used to. And then... I can see, I can see the blue sky, and I can see the ocean, I can see the sky rider writing, Pat loves Delia, and everybody on the beach turns around and looks at us because we're so happy. Then the thing is, you see, I wake up and I can't see anything. See, when my eyes are closed, I can see, but when my eyes are open, 
then I can't see. The terrible thing is, you know, I just have to be so dependent on everyone because I'm blind. I know I should be on my own. See, this whole time, I know I should be on my own, but I can't now because I'm blind. Oh, it's just D, a terrible D. thing. Uh, D, it's getting a little late, sweetheart. You know, everybody is really right. I mean, I could try to take care of myself, and I really try, but being blind, I don't think I can do anything about it. I know it's a lot of extra work for Pat and for everybody, but there's nothing I can do about it. Darling, you mustn't feel guilty about it. Yeah, I know. Um, it's just very hard for me not to. You know, it would be great if, if Patty could go on a holiday. You know, I mean, I could go also. Um, I don't know if I'd enjoy it so much because of my condition, but I think it would be really, really good for Patty. You know, something like the vacation that you're going on. But a cruise. A cruise. A cruise. That would really be great. You know, I bet if I went on a cruise, I could probably get my eyesight back. Yeah, that's right. You know, Dr. Pagano said that what I really need is a change of attitude. I think a cruise would be a perfect change for me. Well, then Patrick couldn't get away from the hospital right now anyway. Well, he might be able to if he just spoke up a little bit. You know, sometimes he just has to speak up. That's for sure. What? I said, you're very right, Dee. Patrick does not know when to speak up. Well, I think, um, I think I better go now. I've kept you up very late. Oh, darling, you're going in the wrong direction here. Oh. Let me turn you around. Oh. Hey, all right, I'll, I'll help you. I'll take you to the door. There you go. Now. OK. Sorry, just step in here. OK, all right, I got now, it. Can you I get you on your way off? Yeah. The rest okay. of the way? All right, I'll just take everything very slowly, and then when, when Patty comes home, then I'll tell him maybe we should go away. Good night, everybody. Good night, dear. <laughs> Friday, SoapNet is serving up a tailor-made Beverly Hills 90210 marathon with every guy that Kelly Taylor has loved and left behind. Take a holiday from the holidays starting Friday from 11 to 11, only on SoapNet.